Asia on a race to adopt generative AI, transforming how we learn, connect, create and innovate. But where does the region stand? CNA's Rani Samtani spoke to industry leaders and policymakers, also at the Milken Institute Asia Summit. From China to Singapore, South Korea, Thailand and India, AI's rise in Asia is reshaping economies in real time. Asia is at the, the forefront of adopting AI across a range of industries. We're seeing it particularly in areas like uh, financial services, uh, in healthcare, public sector, etc. We also work with enterprise and governments on deploying AI to address societal needs. Like Japan is a declining population uh, with a declining workforce. And I think uh, you know, AI cannot solve all the problems in Japan, but it can help. And we're working with some of the largest enterprises in Japan to deploy AI. Uh, AI workflow solutions uh, making to complement, not replace staff in Japan. Artificial intelligence is expected to transform the public and private sectors in Southeast Asia, with some estimates suggesting it will add nearly one trillion U.S. dollars to the region's GDP by 2030. AI is being applied on the other side to real-world problems. Like any other new technology, right, there's a lot of experimentation going on. Uh, but getting AI into real world, real business outcomes and with a tangible proof point, I think that's the biggest uh, you know, challenge. There's a lot more that we can learn, especially from Australia or from the US in terms of adopting AI. AI is a big term and there's a lot in it. There is like your infrastructure layer, there is your tooling layer, um, and there's also your application layer. And I think the greatest challenge is helping people understand all these different um, layers in the AI ecosystem and understanding how they can use them, whether in a personal life or in um, the professional life. As with any new technology, there are concerns that the power of AI can be used in harmful ways. AI tools are used every day to produce images or even the narrative online to manipulate populations to think a certain way. And what we're working with the government in Japan as well is also in pilot projects to uh, detect misinformation on social media, uh, detect uh, images or videos that were generated using the latest AI models uh, so that like, uh, we can decrease instances of this manipulation, uh, perhaps at scale by other state actors. Uh, uh, this is kind of critical in times of uh, even the elections coming up in Japan as well. It is so important that we have a clear regulatory environment because when AI is used for good, it's fantastic. But when, you know, when there are inbuilt biases or issues around the ethical use of AI, we're seeing, unfortunately, a big growth in things like deep fakes. This is a real problem, so it's super important that we have a strong governance model around, it, around the use. Some governments across Asia have been taking a wait-and-see approach to regulation, issuing frameworks and guidelines instead of binding rules on AI. That's especially because the technology is constantly evolving. Many in the public and private sector have been focusing on boosting investment and capabilities in AI, in particular when it comes to upskilling and training. Rani Santani, CNA, Singapore.